happy anniversary. Thank you, sir. Uh, you and James Farley. Uh, uh, from uh, first guest to last guest here with uh, 70 years in between. Let me ask you this, though. Uh, on that account of flipping the ticket, uh, Donna Brazil on another show says she was under enormous pressure to have a backup plan to do this. Um, is that a fair, is, is that a, is that a fair um, response to all this criticism that she's been getting? Well, you know, uh, Chuck, first of all, let me, I, I will answer that question very directly. But, Everywhere I go right now, we're focused on elections on Tuesday in Virginia and New Jersey. And what the people are telling me is they want to know how are they going to get their good jobs back? How are they going to get health care? How are they going to make sure they feed their family? And, and that's the focus of Democrats across this country. Now, let me get back to your very important question. I have great respect for Donna. Uh, I consider her a friend. She's done a lot for the Democratic Party. The charge that Hillary Clinton was somehow incapacitated is, quite frankly, ludicrous. Uh, Hillary Clinton was a... A uh, tireless senator, a tireless secretary of state, and a tireless candidate. So do you and, agree with uh, the Clinton campaign that it, Donna it, Brazil fell for Russian propaganda? I, I don't know what Donna Brazil fell for, but all I know is under the rules and bylaws of the Democratic National Committee, she couldn't have done this. Uh, Hillary Clinton was anything but incapacitated. She was tireless. She she uh, was a workhorse. And uh, and, and frankly, what, what saddens me about this as much as anything is I, I think people who read that charge, which is is just uh, yeah. without merit, are, are going to perhaps start wondering about other claims in the book. All right, let me ask you about other claims in the book, including this idea that essentially the DNC was playing favorites, uh, that the process, and, uh, and I think she even says it wasn't a criminal act, but she thought it compromised the party's integrity. There's been some stiff reaction from progressives. Nina Turner, the president primary, presidential primary, was rigged. Jeff Weaver, the former Sander, Bernie Sanders campaign manager, called it a laundering operation. <laughs> Senator Elizabeth Warren told me that you're being tested, and your vice chair said this, Donna Brazil's account cannot simply be dismissed. Okay, Elizabeth Warren says you're mm -hmm. being tested. How are you going to restore trust with Sanders supporters that the DNC uh, is, is going to be a fair mm -hmm. place uh, to, to, it's going to be a fair arbiter mm -hmm. here for the party. Hey, I accept every test because I ran for this office because I believe in this party and I knew we needed to up our game, Tim. <laughs> I'm thinking of Tim okay. Russert. No. Because I'm a Buffalo guy. Okay. you got to understand that, Chuck. Uh, but here, here's, the, here's, here's my view on this. When I hear the word rigged, let's, let's be very clear. Hillary Clinton won the Democratic primary by 4 million votes. Dem the Democratic National Committee does not run elections for primaries. The Republican National Committee does not run elections. States run elections, and those elections were run by the states. We run caucuses, and, and Bernie Sanders did very well in the caucuses. Where I think uh, both Senator Warren and uh, Keith Ellison and, and myself, where we agree is we have to earn the trust of the voters. And during the process of the Democratic primary, we fell short in that, undeniably. And I accepted that responsibility, and here's what we're doing about it. Right. Number one, uh, in the future, Moving forward to 2020, we're going to be announcing our, our Democratic uh, debate schedule before we know who the candidates are, because the number one goal has to be to be fair and transparent. We, all of our uh, fundraising agreements, our partnerships will be available to everyone, as they were actually in 2016. And then what we have to do is make sure we're also working with voters up and down America, Rural America, urban America, everywhere in between, but, but to earn you, their trust. Don't you owe the Sanders campaign an investigation? I mean, Donna Brazil put that charge out. Don't you and Keith Ellison, shouldn't you guys look no. back and see if her charges are true? Well, again, uh, I totally agree, Chuck, with the notion that the DNC fell short during critical so moments of the, of the primary. I think so we, have right. to, we have to do better is what we have to do, Chuck. And that's why I, I was very clear during our primary campaign, during the campaign for DNC chair, that we have to make sure that everybody feels at the end of the process that everyone got a fair shake. That's what we're about, Chuck, uh, and that's what we have to do. That's how we earn people's right. trust. i got to ask you about Tuesday's elections here, and there's been a lot of charges of who's running a, a, a full or angry campaign. Terry McAuliffe called Ed Gillespie's campaign racist. But i got to play for you this, this ad that a Latino group ran, and then you're going to see a Virginia Republican ad response to it. Take a look. Run, run, run! Drive a pickup truck? Democrats think you're a racist. 
support the president, Democrats think you're a racist. It's despicable and it's wrong. I, I'm sure you've been familiar with the ad itself and the controversy mm -hmm. around the ad. Um, and the Republican Party's response that it was that it was basically <laughs> Democrats don't like it when Repub you know, when Republicans stereotype. Aren't you stereotyping our all pickup oh, truck? I, I drive a pickup truck. I mean, are all pickup truck drivers racist? That, that's what the ad, the, do you understand why some people think the ad implies that? Well, you know, Chuck, let's be clear about what's happening in the, in the race in Virginia and in all too many races, dog whistle politics. Uh, Steve Bannon just endorsed uh, Ed Gillespie in Virginia this morning. And throughout this campaign, uh, Ed Gillespie has been fear-mongering. He's been doing the same thing Donald Trump did. That's not fair, that's not right. Virginia, under Ralph Northam's leadership, under Justin Fairfax's leadership, they're looking for a, a way to unite people. And Ed Gillespie, throughout the campaign, has been dividing people. And when you, when you hit the bully back and the bully starts crying, those are crocodile tears to me. Party have to do I'll, some soul searching if you don't win Virginia governor? Oh, we're going to win Virginia governor. And, and I've been out there. And, and here's the thing, Chuck. I was out there literally yesterday campaigning with Justin Fairfax, campaigning in a House of Delegates race. We had people from our revolution there. We had people from Swing Left there. We had people from the DNC there. The people across America that I see every day in Virginia, New Jersey, and Washington State and District 45, they're moving forward. They're, they want us to focus on the future. We're building that infrastructure. We've knocked on twice as many doors as uh, we did tw four years ago when Terry McAuliffe won, and I'm confident we're going to win again this Tuesday, both in New Jersey, Virginia, right. and many other key races across the country. Well, we'll be watching. Uh, it's certainly going to be close and interesting. Tom Perez, chair of the DNC, thanks for coming on and sharing your views. Always a pleasure. You got it.